Good friggin' morning, folks. Yeah, coming in. Quick tidy up because today I've got to first go upstairs, pay some freaking bills. That's right, it's the end of the month. We have to pay the rent. Uh, I have to pay off our old accountant because we've got a new one who's proactive and uh, immediately, first impressions are excellent. She also doubles up as a business advisor, which is great for us. And uh, I also need to order some bags for the jerky that we're going to do for the pub and maybe some really hot sauce. So half an hour to an hour of computer time upstairs and then we're going to come down and we're going to get stuck right in, and I mean right in, to getting this little beauty. That's right, this mounted on the wall so we can start to set up our glycol cooler for the cold room. Well, that only took me up until bloody 12 o'clock. Oh, so it seems a bit weird that I'm making, uh, making a cold room when actually today it's 12 and a half degrees in here, which is perfect cell attempts, and I'm bloody freezing. But that said, we do need to put together a mount for the um, heat dump, which is going to go outside, and then we're going to we're going to build the heat dump which is of course going to involve putting one of the car radiators in here as we know the original uh, radiator for the heat dump died a died a death so what we're set up with here is two sections of this particular heat dump back uh, which have lugs on the top I don't have a mount for this but if you look what I do with this saw, it kind of sits in those lugs there. So my plan is, we're going to get some steel, we're going to put two lugs in there, we're going to run it down, so maybe we have a bar across, lugs on, a bar across the bottom with two drop downs here, and then on this section here, there's a little screw. So this screw would obviously tighten up, pushing those lugs into these holes here and here. So I just need to get some flat steel or angle iron out, cut and trim it with a grinder, weld it where I need to weld it, make sure it stands off the wall by, I don't know, not too much, uh, a couple of inches so we get good airflow around the back. And then uh, we'll mount it with these lugs and use this screw to secure it in place. And then we can determine which side we would like the pipes to come out of because these plates on the side are interchangeable so we can whip this off. Looks like it's on the right side though because the pipes are going to come in this side on the wall outside. So yeah, we'll just zip that onto there and hook the electric up which is in this little box here down at the bottom with the electric symbol and uh, then we'll pipe it up to the uh, glycol cooler and we'll fire the bad boy up. Well I've saved myself a little bit of leg work. This was something that I made for the cask washer uh, about six months ago that didn't turn out to be much use at all. And, you know, surprisingly, it's uh, not a bad fit in terms of what we're looking for. If I hold it up that way, uh, it pretty much has everything that we need. It's got two tabs here on the side, which almost engage perfectly with what we're looking for here. Uh, this bottom section is a little bit long, but that means I can get in there to put fixings in, I suppose, which is another bonus. And all I need to do then is just add a little tab here for that screw to, uh, to screw in. I'm going to just mount that whole thing to the wall and drop the uh, drop the heat dump on it and I don't have to paint it because it's freaking stainless. And I do have a little bit of stainless bar here as well that I can weld on just to make a few little tabs where needed. Aren't I a lucky boy? Okay, 
every time does the helmet fall back on my head. Ah, so let's get this little section off the floor. So the plan is, I've marked this out on here. These two little pieces of steel are going to sit like that. And then they are the hooks that will hold the unit. So all I need to do is weld them along here, that one on that side, and then we'll cut this, and then we'll cut and shut it, move it up a little bit further so the bottom section meets up with that screw hole in the bottom of the heat dump. So I've just sharpened my tungsten. I'll just turn the argon on. There we go. So I think for this we're going to use uh, probably about 75 amps on the foot pedal so I can control it as I need to. Got a little bit extra on the pedal then if I need it. And uh, we're just going to dive in. I've got a 1.2mm tungsten, um, pure argon with uh, it's Argo Shield actually, so I think that has maybe a little bit of CO2 or something in it. And then I don't know what size cup this is, but if you're into your welding, well that's how big it is. It's got a gas lens in it as well. And then all we're going to do is just hold this bad boy up against there and uh, I'm going to blast the corner and tack it on. Just like that. And just check it for square. It's not looking too bad. Blast the other corner. There we go, there's a bit of a gap, it didn't want to meet up there. Right, so that's one side tacked. That's why I use the amps, you see, because I'm not worried about the corrosion resistance of this particular weld. The easiest thing for me to do is just up the amps a little bit and uh, melt the metal and it'll run into any gap that needs filling there. So, same on this side now. With a different hand, of course, so I'll just put myself into an awkward position so we can grab it. There's one baby, and then let's spin it again. So it is a funny position. We prop it up a little bit. I don't want to burn myself on this previous weld, and I don't want to touch my uh, tungsten into into the weld puddle. Oh, that flowed beautifully. That one. There we go. So, you see on there. It should let you focus. We've got two tacks, one either side. I haven't deburred this because uh, I lower the ampage on the welder and just run around the edge of where I've cut it with the angle grinder and uh, the plasma from the torch just takes all the sharp edges off basically. A little bit of a cheat, I know. Right, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to come in on the inside here and we're going to weld this out. There's one side. Flip. 
There's two sides. So they're basically just butt welds on that side of the uh, that side of the piece, and then on the back we've got. Uh, well, I believe there's a fillet weld. So we want a little bit of filler off for this, and we're just going to dab, dib dab. I'll bring you in for this shot, actually. See what you think. I don't know how much of it you'll get from over there, but you might be able to see what we're doing. Make sure that I can run the blade, the uh, torch, should I say, across. Right then, let's go. Keeping the end of the rod in the puddle. And just washing as much steel, as much filler rod as I need. And that, a little back and forth motion. And we're coming to the end. A little bit of rod and drop down on the amps. There we go. So that is the back welded. Let's see if we can get a nice shot of that little beauty. See if the camera will pick that up for us. How's that? It's not a great shot with the lighting. So we've got the fittings on the end, of course, of the uh, the chiller. So that goes in there like that. It is a little bit long, uh, so we're going to have the ends poking out a little bit. But it's just like that. That's something I can live with. And if needs be, but it's going to be in the back. No one's ever going to touch it. The worst that's ever going to happen is a bird might land on it or something like that. So that section works perfectly, and then if I rotate around the back, you know, like quit, let's just hang it off the edge actually, and then you'll see how this is going to work. A bit of, bit of a back up on the shot here, so you can, hold on. Right, I think we're in shot now. So, this section hooks into the top like this and in it goes to the bottom section there that goes underneath and then in goes the bottom screw thus securing the whole unit together how oh, do you like them apples and there we are she is now mounted and ready for hanging up on the wall which oh my goodness it's not too heavy like but and listening to me moaning like that anyone would think it weighed a ton wouldn't they but yeah that's ready to go on the wall now i'm gonna go and pick up some uh, worm drive jubilee clip jobbies and some of uh, have i got one in here yes some of these these are the 15 to 22 mil push fit adapters and they fit perfectly into these little silicon uh, reducers that I've got to take us down to 15 mil pipe. This will be on the wall before four o'clock, almost guaranteed. Then we've got to run a power cable out to it. We've got to install the chiller unit. We've got to fill it with water and turn it on. I think it's going to work. The time is half past two now. I'm off to screw fix to get these fittings. And then when I come back, I'm going to freaking blitz it. And just like that we are back. Yeah, let's get these into position now. There you go. Throw one on the floor. Just to help it slide in. A little bit of silicon spray. That should just help ease this little beauty into position. Probably wise if I take it out of the sink. 
Same with this one. Bit of silicon spray, maybe on there as well. And then, oh, that's beautiful. That's gone right up to the, right up to the nuts. Ah. This one's a little bit more tighter. Put a bit on there. Oh yes, there we go. Right up to the nuts. And then we've got these. I bought the wrong ones. Like a plonk. But these will do. I bought some really big ones as well, but uh, I didn't really need the big ones. We can cut them down if needs be. So let's just get this wound in. The good thing about these ones from Screw Fix though, you can order stainless steel ones. So uh, they're going to be a bit more robust outside in the bad weather and whatever else. But they're, yeah, they're all right. They're all right for the price. You can buy much better clips than these, I must say. I've bought better ones than this in the past. But because the solid stainless, stainless drive and stainless band, it's the right kind of thing that we need. And then these uh, radiators also have a half inch BSP plug in this section here as well, which I'm going to have to plug up before we go any further. That's just that little fella there. It's not a problem though, we'll plug him up and then this vent plug here, we'll just put a bit of something into that, plug it up as well. And then we're ready to, uh, ready to mount. What I've done here to stop that BSP dead in its tracks is just uh, put a straight connector in place and put a bit of pipe in there and then squash it effectively. So I'm just going to get the torch out and uh, instead of folding and folding that section there, I think I'm just going to uh, heat it up with the map gas and then we'll, we'll just drop a little bit of solder in. That should do it. This is really worth its weight in gold. Any plumbers out there or budding uh, plumbing amateurs, uh, if you've got the old butane blowtorch, I suggest you get rid of that. Buy yourself one of these and uh, one of these fittings and a canister of this. These cans are about 15 quid each, 10 quid each. That's about 90, but we saw how quick that was from a standing start to finished. I've never known anything quite as good as this for uh, soldering or brazing. It's fantastic. Well, that was a bit of a fail. So uh, that little thing that I made then, while it screws in, it just keeps clunking round and round and round. So it looks like this thread is BSPT. It's not BSP, so uh, their BSP straight 15 mil, uh, well, 15 mil, yeah. Whereas I need a BSP T, a half inch, not 15 mil. So this is a half inch BSP T threaded nipple, and once you get it in, it's solid. Uh, so so I can't get the bugger back out. But uh, I've been back on the Screwfix website. And they do a BSP, a half inch BSP flanged male cap or whatever it's called. So if I can get that to go in there and to seat around the outside of the plastic, job done. Robert's your mother's brother. It's put us back a bit now though because it's gone half past three. So I'm going to have to shoot back up there again if I want to see this project out today. And uh, yeah, it's starting to get a little bit tedious running up and down to screw fix. So, 
yeah, do I do that now? I might actually mount this on the wall and then shoot up there uh, to give me a chance to avoid the school run. It's half past three. It's probably a sensible thing to do, actually. To the wall outside, I think it looks damn good. We've piped it up, tidied the pipes up in that corner. We just need to put the cooling box into the other corner. It's now 10 past four, so I think I'm safe to run up to screw fix to pick those few other pieces up. And fingers crossed, we will get it actually running tonight. No leaks, please. Well, as so often happens, I've been up to screw fix and picked up the BSP plug and unfortunately it's exactly the same thread pitch and diameter as their 15mm compression fittings which is what I tried to use in the first place so this is uh, basically no good we can use it for other things though so that'll just go into stock it's only a quid £1.60 uh, but because they don't have what I want I've uh, made my own, so we've got a bit of a uh, half inch BSPT stainless steel threaded barrel nipple and uh, I've just welded a bit of scrap to the end to create a plug and then I've just hit it with a grinder to square it off so it's got something I can get the, uh, the spanner onto to put it into the hoil so we'll just wrap a little bit of the uh, thread tape around it get me a little bit tongue tied there but yeah bit of thread tape around it and then we'll shoot out there and bung up that last hole on the uh, um, heat dump <laughs> come to me soon or later and then we should be able to turn it on this should work because it's a tapered thread and not a parallel BSPT, BSPP are the two different phrases in the air that's tightening down that's more than what the other one did so I've got that in the way a little bit but that's not too much of a problem which is what we've given her there, I don't want to over tighten it so let's charge up the system oh, I need to run power cable as well. Good thinking Batman. Well the moment of truth folks there she is that's right we're just filling her up with water the ice bath is just about full so we've just got to wait for the uh, the STC there we go and it's kicked in so that's pumping liquid out now. I'll just fill that back up. It's obviously pumping liquid out to the heat exchange outside. It looks like it could be working.
Right, we've got enough water in the top. The level's dropping slowly. I think it's working, it's taken some liquid out. So it's obviously filling the heat exchange up outside. We'll give it a few minutes and then we'll come back. It's at 13.4 degrees as it stands right now. So we'll see how we get on with that. Oh, and also, we'll better see if that fan's blowing out here. I can hear it. Check that out. Oh, perfect. Now that is a relief. And I don't see any drips. So that's also a relief. Cavalry's arrived. That means one thing. It's home time. I did have a little leak on, you know, that nut that we welded. So I took it back out, bound it with tons more PTFE tape, put it back in. So far, so good. But check this out. I'm not going to leave it running all night, obviously, because I'm not here. But we are down to 6.4 degrees. That tells me, frick yeah! I think we've got it working, folks. So yeah, 6.4, 6.3, look, it's dropping all the time. The glycol's recirculating nicely, or the glycol bath. I will put glycol in here in the winter, so it doesn't freeze. But you can see, look at the ripples on the surface. Definitely recirculating. And this top pump, well look at the ripples on the surface there. That is more than powerful enough to recirculate through there, all the way across through one, through two, through three internal cooling radiators. So uh, I think I'm just gonna belt these pieces of timber with a spot of varnish before we put them together. And I think we've got the beginnings of a fully functioning cooling system for the cold room. That feels like I've done a day's work today, love. I believe you are. Yeah, shall we go home? Aye. Yeah, let's go home. There we go. That's it, folks. There is no more for today. But we'll be back, as usual, on tomorrow's vlog. We might even start to get that cold room up. No, I haven't got enough stuff. We'll see. We'll see. See you tomorrow. Cheers.